Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Critics Association's Foundation After Show. Each week on this show, we will discuss the latest episode of the Apple TV Plus series based on the beloved science fiction novels of the same name by author Isaac Asimov. I'm Jamie Philbrick, entertainment journalist and critic for We Live Entertainment and a member of the Hollywood Critics Association. We have a great show for you tonight. We will be having a spoiler-filled discussion of the first two episodes of the series, which just dropped tonight, and they are entitled The Emperor's Peace and Preparing to Live. But first, allow me to introduce my co-hosts for this show. First up, Yale! Hey, Yale! Hello, thanks for having me. Absolutely, um, why don't you go ahead and uh, uh, introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, hi, I'm Yael Teagle. Um, I write for Fanversation and I host the uh, Law & Order Special Victims Unit podcast, Law & Order S Review on Fanversation's YouTube channel every Sunday. I also have a show here on the Hollywood Critics Association called Hollywood Approved. Um, so you can check that out on Wednesdays on this channel. Awesome. Awesome. And we are also joined by my fellow co-host, Nikki Fowler. Nikki, how are you? Tell everyone a little bit about yourself. I'm great. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikki Fowler. I'm the founder and publisher of Glitter Magazine, and I'm also a member of Hollywood Critics Association. Um, love, you know, some of my favorite shows are, you know, The Crown. I love sci-fi. I think um, when I was a kid, not to age myself, but I think I saw Star Wars in theaters probably more than 30 times. <laughs> um, so just love the genre all, all together. So really excited to uh, be here to chat about Foundation with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Now we have all seen the first two episodes. Uh, so we will be discussing those in a moment. But before you begin, I wanted to ask you both uh, this question. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about your knowledge before watching this series of the source material of the novels. Um, now I will say full disclosure, uh, I was aware of the novels. I have uh, two older cousins who are huge sci-fi geeks. So they were reading these books when uh, we were growing up. But I uh, often say I will not read a book if it doesn't have pictures. I'm a big comic book fan. So uh, I did, have not uh, read these novels. I uh, was not familiar with the source material actually at all when I started watching uh, the first two episodes. And coming from, uh, you know, I I'm a bit of a Marvel and DC geek. So whenever I'm watching those shows, it's like, I know what the flash, I know the whole history of the flash. I know the whole history of Loki, you know what I mean? And so when, uh, so it was nice for me to watch a series, especially based in the sci-fi uh, genre that I have no idea what's going to happen next. Uh, so uh, let me start with you, Yell. Um, what was your sort of background and, and history with the source material, if any, before watching the show? Yeah, um, I had never even heard of this, uh, <laughs> which I feel terrible saying as a big sci-fi lover, I'm sorry, I had not heard of this. Uh, but I will say, like Jamie, I'm not a big uh, reader, so um, I was not familiar with this, hadn't heard of it, but I do, you know, I I tend to cover uh, Canadian sci-fi specifically, um, so I can't help watching this and comparing it to all sorts of things that I do love, um, but I came in completely blind, real excited to like discover this show as it unfolded in front of me and not have to compare it to the books. And, you know, I know book lovers tend to be very protective of their books. Um, and I am glad that I don't have to feel that this either didn't do it justice or was better. I, I don't have to enter that argument at all. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And comic book fans obviously are very uh, uh, protective of their material as well when these uh, adaptions come out. Nikki, what was uh, your sort of history with the, the books prior to the series? Um, well, I had no idea <laughs> whatsoever on Isaac Asimov. And I, you know, turned on, you know, to watch uh, episode one and basically saw uh, this Hummercraft and I'm like, wait a minute, what's this Star Wars? What's going on? And I, you know, stopped watching. Obviously, I was watching the screen. I stopped watching and basically just started to dive into the rabbit hole of Isaac Asimov. And I was just so I'm, I'm like, why didn't I know about this? So um, ordered all the books, um, Kindle, uh, you know, audio, audio books on my walks. I was just like just engulfed in it. So I have read maybe, you know, 
two or three of the seven books. So there's the trilogy, oh, wow. then you have the sequels and you have the prequels. Um, but, you know, reading this, um, you start off in Foundation One and, you know, with the with episode two, you know, we're diverting from the foundation. So they're pulling ideas from the prequels and the sequels and you're just like, wait, hold on, wait a minute. This is a lot of information spanning thousands, you know, hundreds and thousands of years and tens of characters. So, um, you know, it's a lot, it's a huge undertaking. So, um, you know, I know there's lots of Asimov diehard fans out there. Um, you know, some read the books in the order that they were written. Um, there's a couple ways you could, you could, uh, you know, kind of absorb all this. So, um, yeah, so I do have this background on some of the differences of the series and the books. So <laughs> long story short. Well, that's excellent. That's going to come in handy uh, on this show, I can tell already. Um, you know, and I'm going to say you're a better person than I am because you went ahead and bought the books and started reading them. I just wikipedia And so I got the, the cliff notes, basically, on what's uh, kind of happening. And I did notice, and we'll talk about it as we go through, um, but I did notice that it did look like we were sort of jumping books a little bit. Uh, around. So we can talk about that as we get to it. Um, but let's start off uh, and talk a little bit about these first two episodes. I'm going to do my best to try to give a quick recap. But uh, if you've already watched uh, the first two episodes, you know, this is some dense material. So there's a lot going on here. And uh, there may be some bullet points that we miss. But uh, basically, uh, the first episode starts off with two different timelines, one in the future, and one about 35 years in the past. Uh, the future timeline uh, appears to take place on an alien, uh, sort of an alien world, uh, and we are introduced to the character of Salvor Hardin. Uh, the second timeline is 35 years in the past, as I mentioned, and introduces us to a galactic empire run by three clones. Lee Pace plays uh, the middle clone who's sort of in charge. Uh, that is Brother Day. Brother Dawn and Brother Dusk are younger and older versions of this clone. Uh, we are then introduced to Gail Dornick, a young girl. Let's see a photo of uh, Gail here. There we go, uh, of Gail, uh, a young girl who wins a contest to work with the renowned scientist and mathematician, Hari Selden, played by Jared Harris. And there's Mr. Harris. Uh, and Selden is using math and science uh, to predict that the civiliza civilization will be gone in the next uh, millennium and wants to start a foundation to preserve knowledge so that the dark ages are reduced uh, by uh, a, a lot so that maybe um, a, maybe in a thousand years they can kind of come out of this uh, with a, a civilization close to what they lost. Um, the Empire exiles the members of the foundation, including Gale and Selden, uh, which ultimately was part of his plan. Uh, and the group is now headed to a distant planet to begin their work. Uh, the second episode follows their journey to the new planet. And uh, spoiler alert, ends with Selden's death at the hands of his son, uh, Reich. We have a photo of him here. And uh, who also it has uh, feelings for Gail and uh, sends her off to protect her alone in a pod through space. And the second episode ends with her drifting through asteroid fields and adrift into space. Uh, so, Nikki, let me start with you um, and just let me know a little bit about what you thought of these first two episodes. Were there any points that I missed there in our little recap? Uh, and uh, what did you think about sort of um, the characters that were introduced to and the world building that is happening on this series? Um, well, first of all, I just thought it visually was stunning. Um, they put a lot of money into this and I appreciate that. Um, just, you know, in the intro, we get this, um, this, little glimpse of uh, Salvor Hardin on, on the foundation with the, the kids and the, the vault. And then we kind of jump into uh, Gail's story. I love that a lot of these characters were originally written, you know, in the 40s and the 50s and then the 80s for um, mainly white cis males. And then we have this array of uh, inclusivity and a lot of the characters and some of these really badass characters are being played by females as uh, well as women of color. So that was awesome to see. Um, Gail's story, I really loved um, 
Gail Dornick's story uh, because you get this backstory that you don't get in the book. Um, mm. Bittersweet <clears throat> journey from Synax um, to go and work with Harry Seldon. In the series, she's winning uh, this competition. Uh, in the book, uh, you it kind of just jumps to um, her going to, or he, him, <laughs> it's a right, male, right. Going, to work, <laughs> going to work with Harry at the university. So, um, uh, just this, the visuals alone uh, from Synax and the, the the costumes, everything just just looks so beautiful. And um, yeah, so I mean, that was just one character that, character that really stood out to me. That they're giving backstory to Gail, and then she has this relationship with Race. She's coming, uh, you know, seeing him on the hologram, and you see the chemistry instantly. Which in the books, there's not a lot of that steamy stuff. <laughs> you know, it's science and math, and you know, they stick to the ideas. They he really does, Asimov doesn't really um, go into uh, too much of the relationships and, um, you know, lots of contrast, but that was one character that I really enjoyed. Yeah. And Yell, for you, uh, tell me a little bit about your reaction to the first two episodes and, and again, sort of uh, what you thought of the world building and the characters. Yeah, I agree with Nikki that it's beautiful. And I've been saying this since Apple TV Plus launched. They are investing in quality over quantity. They are putting out high quality, expensive shows. And this is definitely one of them. It's beautiful. Um, and I absolutely love that. I do love the character of Gail and that relationship with Raish. And I, you know, I still have some questions, <laughs> but um, I think one of the interesting things uh, that I also enjoyed was the the political storyline with um, with the clones and with the other um, the people that came in that uh, you know there was the terrorist attack and they're being blamed for it and all of that that whole storyline and I'm fascinated to understand how that ties in to the entire other storyline because so far it has nothing they're not connected um, and I'm so excited to see them connect um, one of my big big favorite things about TV shows is when they connect things and when there's continuity right. and when something you're introduced to that you're like, oh, that was a throwaway line then turns out to be something vital. So I'm mm -hmm. waiting for these things and I'm I'm not patient. And I think that these episodes for me were a little long because I'm impatient. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot, you know, uh, I'd read uh, that in the books, and Nikki, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but in the books, they do not give backstories to a lot of the characters. You don't have their layers. You don't know who they are really because the, there are so many characters. And so I feel like I'm fascinated by all these backstories and who these characters are. But again, there's so much going on. There are so many characters and it's we're, we're going to span a millennia, millennia here. So I, I'm hesitant. I'm excited. I'm Cranky, I'm all the feelings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. There's a lot to unpack from what both of you said. Um, let me start with, yeah, the money. Like, I mean, you can see, let me just show this one shot we have here. I mean, yeah, we're yeah. wasting no expense uh, on the sci-fi here. So I love that. I love that, you know, Apple is they're all in on these shows uh we've seen from obviously ted lasso and morning show and some other really good stuff they have going on so they're all in so i love that um and nikki and i think it was great uh nikki that you mentioned uh that uh gail and salvor are male in the books and switched to female which i as I well as Dermazel. Dermazel. yeah who, thank Dermazel. you yeah 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 and so um you know i i just think it everything that you were saying, I think it more inclusive and it just makes, you know, it easier for, I think for us to watch it, uh, you know, it, it, with, um, a female lead, uh, it, you know, in the lead. Um, what's also interesting is the two characters I would have told you are the leads of the series. One is lost in space and one is dead at the end of the second episode. So yeah. I don't know where the show is going, you know, um, now it was a little ambiguous. I guess Jared Harris could live. He could live at the end of uh, of this episode. We we don't know. Um, but but Gal is certainly you know off in space. And then how does this timeline tie in to the timeline with Salvor that we were introduced to in the beginning of the first episode and sort of flashes back there or doesn't flash back but flash forwards to it uh, in the second episode. So there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, but yeah, I will also agree with you that for me, uh, the most um, really 
interesting and intriguing part of the series so far, and this actually surprised me because I'm a big sci-fi guy, is actually the political intrigue. Right. Like the whole court scene, there's this huge court scene in the first episode and you sort of see, um, you know, Jared Harris's character. And he's perfect to play this, too, because you don't really know if you can trust him. You know, he's one of those actors and he's a really nice guy. I've met him, but he's one of those actors where as a performer, you don't know if you can trust him. Right. Like you don't always know if the character he's playing, he plays untrustworthy characters quite often. So I feel like he almost yeah. always plays like. A, a betrayer. He almost always yes. betrays whoever he's with. It doesn't matter what yep. the plot is. Jared Harris is going to betray somebody in the scene. Yes, good point. And we said we saw that in the first episode. Um, <laughs> we see that she he's sort of, uh, or it seems like he's maybe using Gail at a certain point, and then we find out he has a master plan. Um, right. And so I, I love Jared Harris for all that. Jared Harris is so great. Uh, and then I want to talk about Lee Pace. Uh, these Empire clones, I mean, this is a cool thing. I really liked this a lot. Um, I thought, now, you can make the argument he's basically playing his Guardians of the Galaxy ca character. That's fine. Uh, but Lee Pace plays a great villain, and he's great in this role. Um, and I, I really would love to see more of, and we get to see a little bit in the second episode, the fact that this older clone and this younger clone, they're all the same guy, right? And so at some point, Lee's character will become the older clone and the younger clone will become him and then there'll be a new young clone. So I, I you know, seeing how that kind of uh, comes out. And then, of course, there is a uh, a robot character who who tries to act human, uh, who is sort of um, the advisor to the Empire, to the clones. And, and then, yell, you made a great point that I forgot to put in the recap. And it's pretty major uh, in the storyline is after Selden makes his um prediction of the future there's a terrorist attack that takes down uh you know basically the grand central station of uh of this world of the empire and then that sends uh the clones in the empire um for retribution against uh the planets that may or may not have been involved in the terrorist attack so yeah a lot of really interesting stuff let's talk a little bit about that and the clones um nikki what was your uh takeaway from sort of Lee Pace's performance and the, and all the stuff that we're seeing kind of setting up with the clones and the way they run, basically going to run this empire into the ground, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so intriguing. Again, that uh, the clones are not a part of the original books. Um, but um, yeah, Lee Pace, I mean, he's just rock, a rock star on screen. I mean, looks amazing. Um, he's just giving that clone energy. Um, <laughs> And Goyer had mentioned something about um, the characters were written in a way where they could pivot, they could be a hero or a villain. So mm. you see um, uh, Brother Day, uh, you know, behaving rather badly. So I'm waiting for, uh, you know, maybe there's a spark of hero there somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a very interesting um, twist. And I feel like everything that I'm seeing that's different so far um, really has a purpose. Um, you know, there's lots of things thrown out there that you may feel like, oh, you know, where's this going? Or is this, you know, pulled in just to kind of, you know, entertain people who are not familiar with the, the books. But um, definitely I see things, um, everything really is, is has this intent. So. I, I am shocked that, you know, and I had read that actually in my Wikipedia uh, run as well, but I'm shocked that the clones were not part of the books because they seem such an integral part of the series, of the story. Um, yeah, were you surprised to, to find that out? Yeah, but honestly, I think it's one of the most interesting yes. uh, uh, storylines is the idea that this empire, I think that feels very much like what an empire does, right? That's how I'm not English, but it seems like that's kind of what they're doing there. So I feel like to, to keep this these people in charge, it's the same person just over and over again. And I love the idea that it's three different ages and mm -hmm. uh, Nikki pointing out that there is opportunity for um, them to be good. I think we, I feel like we see a hint of that in the second episode when um, Brother Dawn is talking yes. to, um, uh, what's her name? D uh, Demer, Demer, Dermazel, thank you, I don't know how to say it. Um, but when he's talking already, and it kind of seems like he has a he has a choice. He can do things differently, um, and I'm interested in that. Uh, but Jamie, I think you're right. It does feel a little bit like Lee Pace is playing 
his Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy character. And I, I love Lee Pace. He's an incredible actor. Um, and so I hope that we get to see this character evolve and change for yes. Moon and yeah, yeah. There's a um, a narcissism, and I'm not saying Lee Pace is a narcissistic human being. I'm just saying there's a a narcissism and a uh, an arrogance that he's able as an actor to you know exude. Uh, certainly in Guardians and and in this as well. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's really great. Uh, let, let let's talk about Jared Harris as well um, because we talked a little bit about him before and 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 <laughs> what a great comment that he's always betraying someone. Um, um, you know, there is a little bit of like a Hannibal Lecter kind of thing going on where, you know, you, you, you get that maybe there's something more sinister beneath him, um, but also maybe not. Right. Um, there's this great scene in the second episode where he goes down to the laundry room. Right. You guys know what I'm talking about. And he uh, is very benevolent, uh, benevolent <laughs> to uh, the to, to the, the, the people that are working there. And um uh, so uh, yeah, well, uh, Nikki, let me ask you, what do you think, uh, and this may be a cheat because if you read the books, you might know, but what do you think in the series anyways, will be the future of, uh, uh, uh of the doctor of, uh, uh, you know, Jared Harris, his performance, do you think we'll see more of him in the future? Or do you think he was just the first two episodes? Um, well, you know, the books in the books, he dies, he doesn't die the way he right. is possibly dying in the series. Um, so that's new. And, you know, um, I, I'm trying to figure him out. Um, it's, you know, he looks as though he's the savior, but then there's so many hints of, you know, even that little twist with Raish at the uh, table, have, you know, when they were having lunch, there's this little um, antagonism going on about his father and his real father. And, um, you know, it's, it's what, what is in it for uh, Harry Seldon, <laughs> you know, kind of that vibe. So I'm curious to know, you know, it, he's he's in control here. He's one of the main uh, characters that are is kind of like moving things around like a chess, like chess pieces. So right. I just want to see, you know, uh, I definitely um, feel, you know, he's definitely going to be woven into the rest of the episodes and possibly uh, next seasons as our uh, a lot of, of the other characters, I think they're being very creative. Um, they're sticking to the themes of the original books, but they're um, they're definitely weaving it so that we have a series, so that there's these elements of action and stories that are going to keep keep people interested. I think they're doing it in a very respectful way too of the work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when they have this material, and I think, you know, when you're adapting maybe Tolkien or some some other, uh, you certainly, uh, you know, the Game of Thrones stuff, right? You have so much material, Harry Potter, so much material to kind of pull from. Uh, it's interesting how they're pulling that material. And, and I guess my question to you, Yell, is like, with all these characters, with this dense material that goes for thousands of years, how does Apple get like a succinct series with a story? Do you know what I mean? Like, how do you think this season is going to unfold to where we're still captivated with these characters? I, you know, the idea of after two episodes getting really into these characters and then having them go away or disappear or die. And there's another timeline we're going to see stuff happen in. Like, how do you think they're going to sort of tie everything together? I think that's a great question um, because this show does have vibes of Game of Thrones. It does have vibes of The Expanse, which was being uh, pitched as Game of Thrones in space, which I personally think this is Game of Thrones in space. I agree. Um, yeah. And it also has um, vibes of Westworld with the different timelines and the trying, trying to confuse you. And I honestly think based on everything I've heard about the books now that I've heard of the books, um, I think it might be interesting and it might be a fun choice for them to like kind of if they were to start a new timeline in the third episode and give us you know a prequel show us jared Harris before all of this um it might be interesting to to like really play with time and and space um and so i think that's an option i i don't think that's what they're doing but mm. i don't th i think that is an option um i think they're gonna continue to as nikki say give us the themes of the books um but as we see, they've introduced brand new characters and they've given us brand new storylines and they're trying to keep us interested. And I, I hope that they are able to 
continue to do so. Now that's interesting because when I was doing my Wikipedia research, uh, and Nikki, correct me if I'm wrong, there are prequel books that sort of explain how Selden got to the point where we see him at the beginning of the series. So I don't know, Yell, that's a really good thought. I wonder if we won't see an episode three or four or five where maybe, uh, yeah, as we, we see some of Selden's backstory. Now that we've introduced these characters in the first few episodes, or the first two episodes, there is a lot of room to sort of, like you said, jump around, go back. Um, and because we have two different timelines, well, let's talk about that because Nikki, you may know a little bit more about these two timelines. I'm still trying to figure out, I'm going to go to our cover here. Well, what is this pyramid, this alien pyramid thing? Like, should I know what that is now? Because I still, after two episodes, I'm not sure what's going on there. Before Nikki explains it, can yeah, I do guess? You know? and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cause I want Nikki to tell me if I understood it or not. So it, I think that is what Selden is building and that is the like knowledge and that mm -hmm. you can't get to it unless you're allowed to get to it. <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> so, so you see Salvor, um, Salvor, um, able to move uh, near this vault and the kids are not. Uh, there's this null field that is attacking them and, uh, you know, they're passing out. Um, so Salvor is actually uh, a mayor in, of the foundation in the series. So here she, I, I believe they mentioned that uh, they, they, uh, she's a warden uh, in the series. Um, so um, yeah, so it's a, it's a vault uh, of, you know, information, but in this, in the books, the um, Encyclopedia Galactica that they were building, um, you know, there's th the vault is mentioned quite a bit, but it's not, it's just kind of sort of just blends together. It's not this, um, you know, this, you know, on a mountain with this field of, you know, um, not knowing. And it's kind of introduced uh, in the foundation book one and two. Um, we're here, um, you know, episode two, we're, we're on a ship you know, heading towards Terminus and that whole ship activity is not in the book either. So they've kind of, you know, created this to kind of um, just give us a little hint of what's to come on Terminus. So if that helps. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it explains it to me. Uh, yeah, that actually really good guess, Yell. Yeah, that, I hadn't thought about that. Okay, so that's like the knowledge. That is what they're building. Um, well, I guess in terms of the structure of the show, what I'm looking forward to or interested in seeing how it kind of unfolds is how do we tie these two timelines together? Are they tied together? Um, you know, what is happening with uh, Salvor you know, in the current timeline, how does that connect to Gail in the old timeline, uh, you know, in 35 years previous? Uh, so I, that'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah, let me open it up to you. I mean, any guesses about how, or if at all, we'll see these two timelines connect in some way? So um, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I, um, in the second episode, we got this storyline about Gail and about women's bodies and procreation and things like that. And so I really hope I'm wrong that um, Salvor is Gail's child in the future. <laughs> So that was my assumption. I mean, to be honest with you, when I first sort of saw the character and then we flat in the first episode at the beginning, and then we flashed to the, um, to, to the, uh, 35 years be uh, before I wasn't sure, like, is Gail a younger version? Like that kind of confused me for a little bit. Uh, so the idea that it's actually the child of makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, but I, I just don't want that you do, yeah. Why? Why don't you want that? Color are related. Right. Right. Well, that's a good. That's that's a good point. Um. Now, Nikki, without spoiling anything that you might know from the books, what is sort of your guess about how the two timelines might connect, and and if there is a connection between these two characters? Um. There's definitely a connection. I hate to spoil it for anyone. Um. But you know, well, you know, uh, Gail and, and, and Raish don't have this relationship in the book. So this is all new. So um, your guess is as good as mine on who- a Fair point, fair point. 
is, uh, re you know, in relation to um, uh, this journey, but, you know, we'll definitely find out um, soon. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, and also let's keep in mind, just because it happened a certain way in the books doesn't necessarily mean they'll do it that way in the series, as we've already seen with the clones and and other things that they're, that they're adding. Um, well, Nikki, let me ask you also about your thoughts on sort of, I mean, Will the third episode pick up with Gail? Like, what is going to happen? I mean, have we seen the last of her? Is that character? No, we haven't. Good. I'm glad about that. No, that's not a no. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna, no. Spoil it. Um, but yeah, in the books, you know, Gail kind of drops off. So again, this is all new. Um, so we have to wait and see for, um, you know, episode three to see where they take this. But um you know, I was dumbfounded too, seeing, first of all, Raish killing Harry, and right. if that's what he was doing, and then also, you know, Gail floating off into space, and that definitely, for me, felt, I felt she's going to be back, um, because, again, um, he was not, uh, you know, he didn't move forward in the Foundation series, they just jumped to Terminus, so I, I'm thinking that we're going to see a lot more of Terminus and Salvor in the next episode, and um, yeah, more on uh, this this vault. Well, that, we, that's yeah. Go ahead, yell. Can we talk about uh, this murder or whatever it was that we were seeing happen? Um, because uh, you know, as we see Rache stabbing or withdrawing a knife uh, from Harry, it, it he says it's not what it looks like. It's not what you think. We have to run. Let me get you out of here. There's a lot of questions there. Um, I would love to know what you all interpreted all that as. Well, my feeling is, I mean, he's clearly, you know, we know he loves her or cares for her uh, uh, deeply. And uh, so my feeling is that she walked in on something uh, and he's protecting her from that. Um, now, I agree. It also seemed the way it was staged like, it's supposed to look like he did it and he will find out he didn't, um, you know, could go either way. But my feeling was sort of to take, uh, um, you know, a a as they sort of gave it to us that he killed Selden and is protecting her because she saw it. But that also could certainly not be the case. That was my interpretation. Nikki, how did you sort of see it? Um, yeah, I saw it that way right away, even though that wasn't a part of the book, I kind of felt, no, this, this looks suspicious. And then the way they, um, they had these times where Raish was, you know, had this conflict with Harry, you know, like I said, at the, at the, um, when they were having lunch or dinner. And then, um, even prior to that back, you know, roll back to when they were in front of the Imperial courts and Raish comes in to basically tell Gail like to run, like, you know, they're going to kill Harry run. It's like, where's this disloyalty coming from? And Raish is a character from one of the um, prequels. So he is the um, adopted son of Harry. Um, so I know a lot of the Asimov fans are going to, you know, they, you know, they didn't disclose who, uh, Raish was um, up until these episodes so that I know they're freaking out seeing, you know, you know, Raish is here, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I definitely just from the whole vibe, I'm like, okay, this is a setup. This is not, you know, something, something's up with this. And um, yeah, so that was my take. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Well, I, I, I wanted to also ask you both about sort of, if we could talk about like the I mean, this is a ballsy show, right? Like this is really kind of ballsy, not just obviously, I mean, you're dealing with two different timelines. You're dealing with thousands of years. You're dealing with the sci-fi element, outer space, clones. I mean, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, it's, if they do end up sort of switching main characters as we go along, you know, we were only really briefly introduced to Salvor in these first two episodes. So as a viewer, I'm already invested in kind of like, you know, the journey of the main characters that we were introduced in the first one. And now if we're going to kind of jump along to Salvor and maybe we don't get as much as Gail or Gail comes back or what I, I just the idea of sort of killing off these characters that we've spent now two hours getting invested in. And then what's the rest of the series? Uh, it, it's sort of interesting to me. Um, so, I, you know, yeah, let me ask you like, is it difficult for you as a TV viewer to get invested in a show that is going to change lead characters or possibly 
as much as this could end up changing. I think Game of Thrones has uh, has prepared audiences for that because because there is a good chance next episode we don't see any of the people we've already met and we start fresh and eventually it ties back in together. You know, eventually they all end up uh, in King's Landing. Like this could, <laughs> you know, take us there. I think that, yeah, I think that we have become accustomed to expansive worlds and and viewers are ready and, and accepting to that. Um, I will say uh, back to the the murder plot, uh, just because I want to share my thoughts on it. I think, yeah, please. Um, I think that it every step that Selden has made has been intentional, right? Like the way the trial went, he intended to get them exiled, even though he said, we're gonna be killed. Um, and so I 100% believe that Gail walked in on the next part of the plan um, and that oh. him being stabbed was part of some plan. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's a very good point because every step of the way, Selden, you know, you 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 think he's, you know, betraying people or did it, you know, and it's all part of this plan that he had. Um, oh, I like that a lot that this is all part of the plan. Well, and then to that point, uh, ejecting Gale from the ship would be part of the plan as well. I that I don't know that I don't know because uh, she wasn't supposed to see it wasn't supposed to see it right right you oh that's a good point yeah that's yeah. a good point that's yeah. a good point all right we have to think too of um you know these little this little intuition that Gail has where she's you know um, let me go see what Rach is doing I you know it feels like something's going on and uh you know she has these moments even with Jarrell on the jump ship where she says you know um oh, what right. did, did you say something you know and so she, they're already showing us this you know these elements of her uh intuition so that's pretty cool as well and i wanted to uh, mention as far as the characters weaving in and out the books do that the the characters kind of drop in and drop out like that's just you know how the asimov uh, novels are built and so um you know they they want to stick to the sociological story which is what really draws everyone in and when you start to get too deep into the psychology of these individuals sometimes you know you lose it and i believe that was what was you know, wrong with uh, the ending for Game of Thrones of why a lot of fans didn't like the ending. Um, but even with this, when we had like the love scenes, I kind of, you know, I was so into the sci-fi and the big message. I'm like, wait, what? I don't need this. What's going on? <laughs> but then I'm like, no, wait, this is really cool. And I kind of like this, you know, the relationships and there's a reason for it. So um, that was just my take on, you know, the characters kind of dropping in and out. Well, Nikki, let me ask you about that. Cause um, are you, how do you feel about you know investing time and 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 your and into a show or anything comic book bo you know film whatever books uh where there isn't one character for you to sort of relate to and follow but many characters that kind of come in and out i mean how how do you do you like that type of thing or do you like more when you sort of have one you know luke skywalker to sort of focus on <laughs> well i i actually like when there are a lot of characters, I don't need to have one character. I like the big picture, the big messages, you know, I wanted to keep going, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so yeah. So that, that's just me. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about Gail. Uh, we mentioned that it was a, a male character in the book, female character in the, in the series, which is fantastic. And I think it's, it, it's great. Um, and also what I thought was really cool about the character. And again, you know, these are only two episodes, right? Uh, but she's in a lot of them. And I felt like her character really grew between the two episodes. You really felt, you know, I think they mentioned how I forget about how long they had been on the ship by the time the second episode starts, but it had been months at least, if not maybe a year or two. Right. And so I really felt like she was a much more mature character than she was when we first met her leaving her planet and then sort of being duped into the trial by Selden and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, let me start with you, sort of the growth of her as a character throughout these two episodes. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, you know, we first meet her and she's this meek, nervous, shy girl. And, and by the end of the second episode, she's like, I've been living here and I know what I'm doing and I know why I'm here. 
um, and and she's not afraid to walk in on a possible murder. Right. Um, and and I I think it definitely it was a great uh, evolution and show of passage of time. It was really I think well done, well acted. I I'm here for it. If we're gonna if we're gonna have a show this dense and we're gonna speed through like this, right. I'm into it. Yeah, uh, yeah. The acting, I thought she, she did a, an excellent job of portraying that. And and even if you think about um, uh, the conference scene, right, where she she uh, went to that conference isn't the right word, but meeting or whatever it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and she really, you know, she was uh, taking Selden's place, but really, you know, you got the feeling that. She is formidable and smart and knows this world and, uh, you know, is ready to take charge uh, and, and love the relationship between her and Raish. I felt like and unfortunately, because, as you mentioned, yo, we're, we're whipping through a lot of material in a short span of time. So I thought that they explored that uh, that love relationship between them really well but i wish there was more time to develop it a little bit more before we got to sort of the head that we got to in episode two but i think that's just there's not enough time right um nikki what did you think about uh the character the actress and the performance um i love lou labelle i you know thought she was great in voyagers and um was really excited to see her in this and I, I just think she she just really killed this role. She um, she's just wonderful, and I, I love the story. Um, as I mentioned, I love the backstory. I, she was this you know mathematician, um, you know, kind of ostracized by her own people and Synax, and a little like a loner, and um, you know, kind of penalized for being brilliant. But yet she didn't have uh, the experience of the real world and going to uh, you know meet with Harry. Um, she was just like a fish out of water. So I definitely saw the growth that you talked about and enjoyed seeing that. So yeah. yeah. Great performance. And Alfred Enoch plays Ray. Should we should mention him. Uh, I thought he was great. And, and hopefully we will get to see him return uh, in the season and uh, see some more of his character. Um, you know, while we have a few more minutes, let's just go around the horn. I'm interested in sort of favorite moments. Was there, I mean, we've talked about a few, but there was there one in particular, either in the first episode or maybe, maybe not till a second that really grabbed you and where you were like, Ooh, this is, I'm in whatever the series is. I'm in now. I like, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, Nikki, I'll start with you. Um, well, I loved the whole sky bridge, you know, blowing up <laughs> the visuals. Yep. I mean, I was just, you know, completely in every crevice of the visuals. It was just really uh, extraordinary. So love that. And, um, yeah, I, I just think, um, you know, everyone's journey um, from the, you know, Brother Day, Dusk and Dawn and uh, 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 Harry Selden. I mean, I, I'm just hooked on all of it. I just love all of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll give a vote for the the sky for the for the terrorist attack as well. I thought that was really cool visual and and a very, um, you know, startling jaw dropping kind of moment, you know, in a series to see, uh, you know, it was definitely one of those, Oh, you know, moments when I'm watching it at home. Uh, yell, what were some of your favorite, favorite moments? I absolutely love the, the meeting conference scene like that, just seeing her step up and like, yes. really be like, I'm smart. <laughs> that's, that's what I heard was her being like, I'm smart and her explaining everything to them. I loved that. I thought it was so badass. Um, I also really loved actually uh, Gail's journey to like in the beginning, the very beginning, mm. seeing her wake up and, and what happened there. And, and I'm like, is that, are we going to deal with what's special that she woke up? Like, that's fascinating. Um, and really the, like, you know, I love sci-fi. So the idea of, of, a, a bridge to bring you down to this planet is fascinating. Right. Um, and it's just such a small, like you guys liked when it blew up. I liked when we rode the elevator. <laughs> I was like, wow. That was awesome too. No, I agree. That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, yeah, yeah I, I liked You know, like I said, I mean, I liked Selden's uh, in the first episode, his sort of master plan and watching you know, how he was sort of conniving and conniving, you know, and, 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 uh, um, 
you know, kind of moving the different pieces around. I liked that. And, you know, no one does that better than Jared Harris. So that was really, that was great. Uh, and then again, just seeing Lee Pace go like full Lee Pace, right? Uh, in, in some of those scenes, um, I like, I like those characters. I like the, um, I, I'm very interested in, in how the empire works. You know, how do these clones work? Who's making the clones? Uh, there's one scene where we see Do uh, Dusk and he's looking at, and I took it as, he's looking at another Dusk and I took it as that's the original human right. that was cloned into the other three. But I also from something Lee Pace said, it made me think that someday he will be Dusk and that dawn will be day there. So there, where's the other dawn come from? Where's the next dawn going to come? Right. So like that stuff's interesting to me. There was a really cool line that um, the robot uh, had uh, um, where she says something about the, the uh, 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 dawn asks her, why do you pretend to be human when you're not? And she says, it's very difficult living in two different worlds it's better to stick in one, something like that. I'm paraphrasing, but I just thought that was a really, uh, oh, that's what they're trying to say with this, you know? And so, I mean, you're talking about a series, you know, different timelines, outer space, clones, an evil empire, robots. I mean, how am I not all in, right? Like, how are we not all in on the show? Um, so yeah, I loved all of that. Uh, and, and, and then, um, you know, just sort of seeing Gail's journey in this, I thought was really great too. And uh, well, let's talk a little bit about what we're hoping for from the next episode and and really the rest of the series. Uh, after, after the sort of tidbits Nikki's told me, my mind's blown. I'm like, I, I, this series is not the series I even thought it was, or I don't know what's going to happen next. But um, uh, Nikki, what, what, what are you... What are your hopes for outside of your knowledge of the books? What are your hopes for the show and, and, and the next episode and where we go from here? Um, well, personally, I want to see uh, where this, uh, the clone uh, dynasty goes and you already see a little bit of the breaks um, and just seeing that, as you mentioned, um, you know, uh, day will become du become dusk and uh, dawn will become day and that's a mind twist right there <laughs> you know um and just gail's story i'm i'm invested i'm invested in um in all of these characters so um i know they mentioned the mule uh in the very beginning of episode one so <laughs> it's it's exciting stuff so you may not know what the mule is but um when i heard that I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're going to go there. So there's just a lot to look forward to. I mean, there's just so much to pull from the books. Um, so, oh, and also more on Salvor on uh, Terminus. I want to see the foundation. I want to see how this, uh, everything unfolds. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't want to cut you off. No, no worries. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you, uh, especially with what you just said about Salvor. Um, now that I know a little bit more and, and, and you even hinted at a few things that have me intrigued, uh, I would love to see an episode maybe just devoted to exploring her character and what's going on in that planet. And then eventually how that's going to connect back. You know, we've got to find out what happens to, uh, the doctor. We got to find what happens to Gail. So I, I, and, and sort of maybe, um, the beginning of the fall of the empire. So all of those things are things I, I, I hope that we get, uh, we see more of and start to get some answers to uh, in the season. Yell, what are some of the things you're looking most forward to and, and, and hoping maybe even to get some answers in the next episode? Yeah, uh, my only hope is uh, that we get answers, that we get <laughs> connectivity. I'm, I'm an impatient viewer. Um, I cannot stand having to wait an entire season to answer the question from episode one. I cannot stand it. Um, so I'm hoping answers. I'm not optimistic that I will get those next episode. Um, and so I will learn to be patient. <laughs> Well, yeah, let me ask you this, because we've all watched shows without naming names <clears throat> lost that you don't get the answers that you 
were promised, quite frankly, at the beginning of the season. And sometimes you get the answers that aren't the answers you wanted, and sometimes they're different answers. But um, I, and for me, I hate a series, and I've seen this a lot lately. It's almost like a trend, uh, especially with streaming series, where the it's not. I don't mind having a cliffhanger at the end of your first season, but don't not end the first season. And without naming names, uh, I've seen shows where the yes. final episode of the first season is the first episode of the second season. And we've even seen recently, um, I had a lot of, I really enjoyed Jupiter's legacy until the final episode and found out they weren't going to answer any of the questions I spent eight episodes trying to get. And that there, I mean, really what I just explained Jupiter's legacy did. Uh, and, and I think the lesson learned of that is don't wait for season two, put it in, you know, or don't wait for the sequel, put it all in the first yeah. movie. And so I guess, I guess my question is, uh, how disappointed will you be if this show kind of does that trend? We hope, knock on wood, it won't and will give us satisfying conclusions to this season and set up interesting stuff for the next. But uh, how much of a concern is that, that that it might not deliver? I mean, you're right. You literally named one that took an entire season to give you the answers. Um, and I think that... I understand that you want to keep the mystery going. And I think that a good series will answer something, but open a new question. And that is to keep you, how right. you keep someone watching. And and yes, end of the season on a cliffhanger, but you have to answer, you have to answer the main question. If I don't know who the big bad is, if I don't know who the actual villain is by the end of the season, then you did not do your job. I need to know who is the hero and who is the villain bare minimum yes. in the first season. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, Nikki, I mean, I know you have a little, uh, a, a little knowledge, uh, but I guess my question would be, um, you know, is there any way that this can't show can't end up, in, you know, is there any way that it ends up not answering our questions? The answer is no, right? Like we're going to find out what we need to find out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna find out what we need to know. I don't think it's that type of show. Absolutely not. So I have you been burned by those types of shows uh, in your viewing pleasure? Uh, I can't off the top of my head remember, but I'm sure I have. I probably stopped watching. <laughs> that Yo, Yellow and I have a whole litany. We have a whole list we're ready to throw out. We're like, ah, Jupiter's legacy. <laughs> I mean, you, you literally keep naming the one that that infuriated me because you had to wait till the last episode to understand how we got there. And then they didn't answer a whole lot of other questions. No. And, and actually I'll, I'll, I'll name it. I kind of didn't, but Titans, uh, which is on HBO max. Now that's the show to me where the first episode of the second season is the finale of the first season. And it's like, why did you even do that? Uh, but um, yeah, so th yeah, there's a lot going on a lot. Uh, we're hoping for with the next few episodes. Uh, Nikki, anything else uh, before we ended here that you want to say about how you much you enjoyed these, what you thought of that these episodes, the acting, and and sort of in closing here, uh, you know, moving forward with the show, and and, and how would you sort of um, recommend it to uh, to to new viewers, to people who maybe you know want to check out these first two episodes tonight. Oh, that's interesting. You know, even when I was talking to my daughter about it, um, you were just, you know, kind of going over some of the characters. She's like, wow, I want to watch this now. Um, just because there's just so much going on and there are a lot of characters, but they're characters that have the substance. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just hope that, you know, from what I see, it definitely seems as though they're, you know, paying homage to Asimov and they're being really, really brilliantly creative with some of uh, these uh, new characters and stories. So I, I just hope it continues to um, stand up to, you know, for what I, from what I'm seeing now and um, doesn't get wonky at all. And um, so far, all of the actors for me are, are, are stellar. Um, so we'll just see, you know, what's to come. I, I, you know, I don't expect perfection. I'm sure there'll be some things that I, I don't care for, but I haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> thankfully. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yell, what uh, are you, what, what are sort of, uh, would be your pitch uh, to someone uh, to check the show out? My pitch would be, um, it's a show you have to pay attention to. You can't be on your phone. Um, <laughs> if you like Game of Thrones, The Expanse, Westworld, um, political, sci-fi, 
uh, big theme ideas. This is the show. I think one of the great things about sci-fi, what makes sci-fi so wonderful is that you can like approach real issues and real conversations and and make it uh, make it in a way that appeals to all viewers and all audiences, regardless of your background or, or perception. You can address these issues, and because it's space and aliens, it it makes sense and and it tells these stories. And I love that. And I think that this show can do that because it it's trying to cover all of these different topics. I, I agree with you 100. percent I mean, that is great storytelling in general, you know, great sci-fi, um, you know, where you sort of uh, are able to, you know, introduce the audience to this new world, but yet it's familiar to us, right? And a lot of the things that, yeah. that ha happen and go on. Um, and, you know, Westworld, Game of Thrones, all those, uh, uh, what was Raised by Wolves, the HBO show that just premiered last yes. season. There was a little bit of that in this. I felt some, you know, similarities. Uh, so anyone, you know, are fans of all of that material, definitely I would recommend uh, this show as well. And I agree with you. It's, it's not a, it, you know, you want to pay attention. You don't want to just put it on in the background while you're doing the dishes. You need to pay attention to the show and it's, and it's well worth it. Uh, one more thing I just thought of that I, I don't, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. Um, I just wanted to get both of your opinions uh, about the gender switch uh, with both of the two lead characters, making them female uh, and which we talked about a little bit, but just, you know how rare it is to get great female roles well, anywhere but television and to have two great female characters and i know we haven't seen a lot from salvor yet but uh, i you know the acting is really excellent two great actresses uh nikki i'll start with you just you know how how great is it to see something like this right I, you know amazing and I, I i feel like you know we're moving into um we're moving into a, a time where uh, we should not have to talk about these things as far as especially women of color getting these lead roles. But we, you know, it's it's something that's um, not happened for so long that I personally, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to cheer Lou and uh, Leah on. Um, even reading some of the um, production notes on Lou's uh, audition and, and speaking with her and just her, her joy in getting this role, um, it's just, you know, it's just so touching. So um, it's great to see uh, women of color represented on screen and um, women in general having uh, taking over these male uh, roles. So um, yeah, I'm just excited. So, and, and then also um, these intimate scenes we don't really see in major films or series, um, um, women of color being able to express themselves, you know, in these love scenes and, and just seeing that. Um, so there's more to come with, um, Salvor, but I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and also you know, it's such a good point with Gail. I mean, I really feel like this is a breakout role for her. Like, if she doesn't get, you know, some movies off of this or some other things, like I'd be really surprised because it's such a great performance, and at least what we've seen in these first two episodes, and a great you know, great character. So hopefully, uh, um, you know, she's doing great. So hopefully that that will get her some more recognition as well. And, and then just yell, I'll give you a moment to sort of talk about these two female characters. Oh, Nikki said it all. I think that, you know, <laughs> they're both Lou and Leia are amazing, amazing actresses. These characters are fascinating. Um, and, and I agree. I think that the character of Gail, the way that Lou is playing this character is just captivating. I, yep. I want to know more. I want to know everything going on with this character. Um, and I absolutely love it and can't wait to see more of them. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see more of the two of you. We're going to do this every week uh, while this show is going on. So um, unfortunately, that is all the time we have today. But we want to thank you all for watching. Uh, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and tune in to the Hollywood Critics Association's Foundation After Show every Friday at 12.01 a.m. Pacific Time and 3.01 a.m. Eastern time. You'll have to get up early on the East Coast to see us. Uh, I want to thank my guests. Yell, tell everyone where they can check you out. Oh, I'm everywhere on the internet mm -hmm. at Yell Teagle. That is Y A E L T Y G I E L. And Wednesdays, you can find me on this channel uh, on Hollywood Approved. Awesome. And Nikki, thank you for joining us as well. Let everyone know where they can find you. 
Thank you. Um, you can find me on socials at Nikki Fowler 28 and also Glitter Magazine. Awesome. And I'm Jamie Philbrick. You can find me at Fieldbrock on Twitter, Instagram, at my name on Facebook. And I'll also take this moment to let you know I'm also the host of the HCA's Pop Council podcast. Every Monday at 11 a.m., we talk about all the nerdy stuff that's going on in the news. So uh, please check that out. Please come back next week and please keep watching Foundation and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.